Hey, it's Kaylee. I'm here today to show and tell you all about the most famous vocabulary word in algebra, the variable. Get ready. Picture this, my soccer team is having a bake sale. We make $2 for each cupcake we sell, but sometimes people also leave us a donation, kind of like a tip. So for every cupcake, we make $2 plus any extra donation the person leaves. So we have an expression that will look like total money will be equal to the cost of our cupcake, $2, plus the donation amount that they leave us. But sometimes people leave a big donation and sometimes people don't leave any donation. So this number here can change. And this changing number is what we call a variable. For example, if I sell one cupcake and get a $5 donation, the total amount of money I will make is the cost of the cupcake, $2, plus my $5 donation. So my total is equal to $7. But the next time I sell a cupcake, they only give me a $3 donation. So I sell my cupcake for $2 and I get a $3 donation. So my total this time is equal to just $5. So the total amount of money I make per sale is dependent on how big or small my variable is. In algebra, we don't usually write a whole long word like donation out to represent our variable. Usually we just choose a letter. In this case, let's choose the letter D to represent my variable donation. So the expression for how much money I make each time I make a sale would look like T, the total, is equal to $2 for the cupcake plus D, my variable. I need to go to the dentist. I ate too many cupcakes at the bake sale. The price to visit the dentist is $100, but if I have any cavities, it costs an additional $50 for each cavity to be filled. Let's write an expression to describe how much my dentist appointment will cost. So how much will it cost if I have no cavities? If I just go to the dentist, my total cost, let's call it C, will just equal the cost of the dentist appointment, right? Just $100. Now, how much will it cost if I have one cavity? Well, if I have one cavity, I'll have to pay the cost of the appointment, which is just $100, plus the cost of one cavity, which is $50. So my total cost will be $150. Now, what if I have two cavities? then I'll have to pay this $50 twice for each cavity, right? So my cost will be $100 plus the number of cavities I have, which is two times the cost for each cavity, $50. So that will give me $100 plus two times 50 is another $100, which will be $200. So what's the thing that is changing here? Yeah, it's the number of cavities I have. Here I had zero cavities, here I had one cavity, and here I have two cavities. So my variable is, that's right, how many cavities I have. But cavities is also a long word to write out. So what should we call our variable cavities? Sure, how about little c? I know we just did our big C for cost here, so little c here. So that means the cost of going to the dentist will be big C plus just the cost of my appointment, which is $100 plus the cost of the cavity times my variable little c, how many cavities. In these last two examples, we use letters D for donation and C for cavities to represent our variables. Variables are typically lowercase letters, and it is most popular to use the letters X and Y. 
you've probably seen expressions like 2x and 6 minus y before. But we could have used a picture of a tip jar to represent donations and a tooth to represent cavities. A variable is just a symbol used to represent values that can vary. That's why it's called a variable. So my cost now that we know what a variable is, we're ready to dive into even more special words used in Join me in the next video to learn about the words, terms, factors, and the number of cavities I have. I'll see you there.